After several episodes looking at oscillators, in today's episode we turn our attention to a different type of indicator, trend following indicators. Specifically, I'll be looking at trigger points we can use from these indicators to help inform our trading strategies. But these indicators are not without their issues, and to use them to best advantage, we need some careful thought and consideration. So stay tuned. So as I said in the introduction, we've spent a lot of time looking at oscillators and how these can be used to give us information about triggers, trend filters, and also volatility filters. But now we move our attention to trend following indicators. And specifically, we're going to look in this episode and the next few episodes at how to use these for triggers and also for trend filters. So this gives us other options to use as we combine different components to build trading systems. So let's just focus a couple of minutes on what the differences are between oscillators and trend following indicators. So firstly, in terms of how these are used, the clue is in the name really, but trend following indicators are typically used in trend based market regimes, or at least that's where they tend to be most effective. And they can be used to both identify a trend and also the direction of that trend, but also give us information that helps us to determine when to get into and out of a trend. Whereas with oscillators that we've already looked at, these tend to be a little bit more multifaceted. So the uses of these can be a little bit more diverse. So just like trend following indicators, oscillators can also be used in trending markets. And we've seen that in previous episodes. But also they tend to be extremely useful in other market regimes, such as trading ranges. But this is where trend following indicators are much weaker. Also, we tend to visualize the information from these indicators in a slightly different way. Oscillators are typically displayed in a separate window, usually underneath the main price action chart. Whereas trend following indicators tend to be displayed over the price action. So the two use cases that we're going to consider for these trend following indicators are firstly triggers. And here they can be used to help inform when we open or close a trade. And as we've said before, these are moment in time events that come from the information the indicator provides. And the second use case that we'll look at is again for filters. And this is one of the techniques we can use to classify the market regime. So for example, is it currently trending upwards, downwards, or is it not trending at all? And the information provided by the indicator here can go on for extended periods of time while those conditions are still in play. So in this episode, we're going to focus our attention on triggers and specifically using these to make probability based predictions. Now, the indicator we're going to use in our examples is probably the most used indicator, which is the moving average. And this is what we'll use as the example for both the triggers, but also in the future for the filters. So let's look at the main trigger points that these indicators provide us with. The first is when the moving average turns up or turns down. So as you can see here, this is a turning point in the moving average line. And when this happens, it usually means that the price has changed direction. And this change in direction of the line can provide us with information that we may decide to act on as part of our trading strategy. Likewise, when the moving average turns down, this again is a good indication that the price has now started to change direction again. Now, the second trigger type is when you have two moving averages now, and it's the moving averages that actually cross over. So what traders typically tend to look for here is when the faster moving average, so that using a smaller number of periods, 
crosses over the slower moving average. And when that crosses down, it's often a sign that the market has turned downwards. And when it crosses over, it's the opposite. The market might be changing in the opposite direction. Now, does this work better or worse than the previous one we looked at? Well, that, of course, will depend on which other indicators you're using in conjunction with this. But the way that you'll determine that for your specific system is by backtesting in order to identify which of these gives you the better edge. Now, there will, of course, be other potential trigger points that moving averages provide, but these tend to be maybe the most common. And with that thorough backtesting that I've been speaking about, we can then start to make probability-based predictions about what will happen to the price action next. And based on those probabilities that you determine, you can then inform your rules of when to open and close trades. But a word of caution, these trigger points are not without their issues. The examples that I've shown today in the charts cover what I tend to classify as the happy path. So this is when the triggers tend to work well. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. And the more observant amongst you would have already noticed in different sections of the charts that I use today where this particular system would begin to perform much less well or even start to fail. And so if you embark on trying to use these types of indicators without addressing these issues, then the probabilities will be stacked against you. But in the next episode, I'm going to start to take a much closer look at what the issues are and also consider what can be done to help to alleviate them. So as always, if that episode's already out, then you can click on it here at the top. If you want to find out more about the platform that DarwinX provides for traders, then you can click on this link right here at the bottom and I'd really encourage you to do that. But now until next time, Trade safe.